One of my students has ADHD. ADHD. ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. ADHD is a chronic condition that affects millions of children and often continues into adulthood. ADHD includes a combination of persistent problems such as difficulty sustaining attention, hyperactivity, and impulsive behavior. Children with ADHD may also struggle with low self-esteem, trouble relationships, and poor performance in school. Symptoms sometimes lessen with age. However, some people never completely outgrow their ADHD symptoms. But they can learn strategies to be successful. While treatment won't cure ADHD, it can help a great deal with symptoms. Treatment typically involves medications and behavioral interventions. Early diagnosis and treatment can make a big difference in outcome. What are the symptoms of ADHD? The primary features of ADHD include inattention and hyperactive impulsive behavior. ADHD symptoms start before age 12 and in some children, they're noticeable as early as 3 years of age. ADHD symptoms can be mild, moderate, or severe, and they may continue into adulthood. ADHD occurs more often in males than in females and behaviors can be different in boys and girls. For example, boys may be more hyperactive and girls may tend to be quietly inattentive. There are three subtypes of ADHD. Number one, predominantly inattentive. The majority of symptoms fall under inattention. Number two, predominantly hyperactive impulsive. The majority of symptoms are hyperactive and impulsive. Number 3. Combined. This is a mix of inattentive symptoms and hyperactive impulsive symptoms. Let us talk about inattention. Well, a child who shows a pattern of inattention may often fail to pay close attention to details or make careless mistakes in schoolwork. Yes, they have trouble staying focused in tasks or play. Appear not to listen, even when spoken to directly. And have difficulty following through on instructions and fail to finish schoolwork. They have trouble organizing tasks and activities. They avoid or dislike tasks that require focused mental effort, such as homework. They lose items needed for tasks or activities. For example, toys, school assignments, pencils. These children become easily distracted. Forget to do some daily activities, such as forgetting to do chores. What about a child who shows a pattern of hyperactive and impulsive symptoms? A child who shows a pattern of hyperactive and impulsive symptoms. Symptoms of hyperactive and impulsive. Fidget with or tap his or her hands or feet or squirm in the seat. They have difficulty staying seated in the classroom or in other situations. They become on the go in constant motion. Run around or climb in situations when it's not appropriate and have trouble playing or doing an activity quietly. Talk too much, blurt out answer, interrupting the questioner. Have difficulty waiting for his or her turn, interrupt or intrude on others' conversations, games or activities. Most healthy children are inattentive, hyperactive or impulsive at one time or another. It's typical for preschoolers to have short attention spans and be unable to stick with one activity for long. Even in older children and teenagers, attention span often depends on the level of interest. The same is true of hyperactivity. Young children are naturally energetic. They often are still full of energy long after they've worn their parents out. In addition, some children just naturally have a higher activity level than others do. Children should never be classified as having ADHD just because they're different from their friends or siblings. Children who have problems in school but get along well at home or with friends are likely struggling with something other than ADHD. The same is true of children who are hyperactive or inattentive at home but whose schoolwork and friendships remain unaffected. So, what to do, if, my child, shows, signs of, ADHD? If, 
you're concerned that your child shows signs of ADHD, see your pediatrician or family doctor. Your doctor may refer you to a specialist, such as a developmental behavioral pediatrician, psychologist, psychiatrist, or pediatric neurologist. But it's important to have a medical evaluation first to check for other possible causes of your child's difficulties. What are the causes for ADHD? The exact cause of ADHD is not clear. Factors that may be involved in the development of ADHD include genetics, the environment, or problems with the central nervous system at key moments in development. Risk factors for ADHD may include blood relatives, such as a parent or sibling with ADHD or another mental health disorder. Risk factors for ADHD may include exposure to environmental toxins, such as lead found mainly in paint and pipes in older building. Risk factors for ADHD may include maternal drug use, alcohol use, or smoking during pregnancy, or premature birth. Although, sugar is a popular suspect in causing hyperactivity. There's no reliable proof of this. Many issues in childhood can lead to difficulty sustaining attention, but that's not the same as ADHD. Let us talk about the complications of ADHD. ADHD can make life difficult for children. Children with ADHD often struggle in the classroom, which can lead to academic failure and judgment by other children and adults. Children with ADHD tend to have more accident and injuries of all kinds than do children who don't have ADHD. Children with ADHD tend to have poor self-esteem. Children with ADHD are more likely to have trouble interacting with and being accepted by peers and adults. Children with ADHD are at increased risk of alcohol and drug abuse and other delinquent behavior. ADHD doesn't cause other psychological or developmental problems. However, children with ADHD are more likely than others to also have conditions such as Oppositional Defiant Disorder, ODD, generally defined as a pattern of negative, defiant and hostile behavior toward authority figures. Conduct disorder, marked by antisocial behavior, such as stealing, fighting, destroying property, and harming people or animals. Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder characterized by irritability and problems tolerating frustration. Learning disabilities, including problems with reading, writing, understanding, and communicating. Substance use disorders, including drugs, alcohol, and smoking. Anxiety disorders, which may cause overwhelming worry and nervousness, and include obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. Mood disorders, including depression and bipolar disorder, which includes depression as well as manic behavior. Autism spectrum disorder, a condition related to brain development that impacts how a person perceives and socializes with others. Tick disorder or Tourette syndrome disorders that involve repetitive movements or unwanted sounds, ticks that can't be easily controlled. Is there any way of prevention to help reduce the child's risk of ADHD? Yes, during pregnancy, avoid anything that could harm fetal development. For example, don't drink alcohol, use recreational drugs, or smoke cigarettes. Protect your child from exposure to pollutants and toxins including cigarette smoke and lead paint. Limit screen time. Although still unproved, it may be prudent for children to avoid excessive exposure to TV and video games in the first five years of life.